Wow, what an evening. <laughs> it's, uh, this is the first exposure I've had to your gala event, and it truly is not only heartwarming, but eye-opening to see the love and passion and commitment from so many people um, for such a great cause. When Mike Greek asked me a couple of months ago if I would consider speaking at the event, the first thing I thought about is what do I really have to come and, and talk about with respect to the good work that you already do. There's no question in my mind, having been involved in sport now for the best part of 40 years plus, that the purest form of sport is what you do. The passion, the love, the excitement, watching these young people tonight, how genuinely excited and happy they are to see one another and be in one another's company, listening to them answer to the questions that were asked by Anna around what inspires them, what they get most from the experience they take part in. And it always started with fun. And it started with friendships. And it, they talked about you know, winning or competing was really the last piece of it. It was all of the other things that make sport, in my opinion, the greatest gift that we can give people in the world today, aside from our time. So it is an absolute pleasure to be here and share this with you. And, and there's no question that I will leave here tonight inspired by what I've seen and just how important the work you do, volunteers, coaches, of course, athletes and sponsors, the things that you do. When Anna made the comments tonight or talked a little bit about my bio, you know, the older I get, the more you become a little bit reflective, I think, on your life and on your experiences. And um, there's no question that I have been an extremely fortunate individual. I've got to travel the world through sport. I've got to play for some of the greatest teams this country's ever produced, and I've been lucky enough to be a part of some very successful teams that have won significant accomplishments in our sport around the world. But you know, it's not the successes that really resonate with me. Don't get me wrong, I, I love to win, and I love to wear medals, and I love all that goes with it, when, especially when you've worked hard and put in the hard work to earn it. But it's the challenges and it's the barriers, and it's the lonely nights, and it's the second guessing, and it's the self-doubt, and it's all of those things that were part of that journey. The byproduct of doing it right and being fortunate and being around good people is that sometimes things go the way you'd like them to go. But on the way to that are a whole lot of things that, that I, as a, as a racially visible person, I can identify very, very closely with people with an intellectual disability or people with a physical disability. Because I grew up just on the other side of Citadel Hill in an area that many would call a marginalized community, in an area that's often been depicted as low social economic, welfare, joblessness, not a healthy place for people to be. But it was my home. And the best lessons that I've ever learned and the lessons that I've carried with me everywhere I've ever gone and ever lived and ever played, I learned in that community. I learned what it was like to be the only person that looked like me that played in a sport that was predominantly a white sport. It started on the Halifax Commons. It, it continued when I traveled the country. It continued when I traveled the world. I was 21 years of age before I played on a team that had another person of color on the team. And I don't want to make this about racism or discrimination. That is not my intent. What I'm trying to say is that I know what it's like to be different. And I know what it's like to be treated differently for something that I have no control over. But if you're lucky enough and you're skilled enough as an athlete, it's often been said that athletes have no color. And that's certainly true today when we look at how some of the professional athletes in the world behave and seemingly are not held accountable to the extent that you or I or many others would be. But I appreciate what it's like to be different, what it's like to be stereotyped, what it's like for people who are, don't make the time or are too ignorant to bother to listen or learn about who you are, where you come from, and what you're made of. Tonight, I got a lesson myself in just how important it is to recognize your difference and to celebrate your difference. Because for years, as an athlete and as a competitor, I used that to fuel my motivation. I used that to push me to be better. I used that to prove people wrong. 
to demonstrate that regardless of where I came from or what I look like, I could be world class no matter what anybody said. But I also had a lot of support along the way. I had two wonderful parents, great siblings, coaches and teammates and friends along the way. Nobody gets to the top of the mountain by themselves. There's always somebody there to give you a helping hand at some of your darkest moments and darkest times. And I was certainly the benefactor of that many, many, many times. But the journey that a Special Olympian takes is a unique journey. And it's the support of people like you in this room. I'm preaching to the converted tonight, but how many thousands of people are out there that have no idea of the good work you do? That have no idea of the differences that you're making in the lives of young people every day? That's the, that's the stuff that matters. The medals are great, but as my good friend John Herdman, who coached our women's Olympic soccer team, said to my team this past summer as we were preparing for our Olympic qualifier, the medal's just a piece of tin. It's the memories behind the piece of tin that matter. And that is what sport does for us. It unites us, it brings us together, it gives us something to celebrate. Many times sport makes us colorless or it masks our disability because it allows us to go out there and be who we are for the love of what we do and be judged by the merits of how we perform and what we do as opposed to anything else in life. So I applaud the work you do here. It is incredible work. It is clearly passionate work to people in this room. And my God, it's important work. And you can be certain that when I leave here and I talk to my wife tonight and I talk to people that I will come into contact with in the coming weeks and coming months, I will talk to them about this experience tonight. I will talk to them about the difference that you make in the lives of the people you work with. But I will talk about the difference that these young athletes make in the lives of people like me who, who've been where they want to go and who've had lots of enjoyment and experience from sport, they made me recognize today, again, how important sport is in the lives of young people. They made me recognize again how love and passion and enthusiasm for something can, can supersede anything else. You do an incredible job. I'm honored to have been asked. Keep up the good work. Thank you very much.